Progress continues. SpaceX is accelerating production of the B-19 assembly with plans to complete it in the coming weeks, and the path to the 12th flight is becoming increasingly clear. Activity at the launch site is also continuing as teams address any outstanding tasks. Furthermore, SpaceX has set new benchmarks in launch frequency and booster reusability, further cementing its dominance in orbital operations. Let's discuss all of this in today's episode of NR Studio. It's clear that SpaceX is accelerating its journey toward the 12th flight, especially after the B-18 event. In a previous report, this rapid momentum was illustrated when SpaceX moved four B-19 segments in just five days. Even after such rapid activity, the company maintained a breakneck pace throughout the B-19 structure. On the morning of December 2nd, SpaceX transported the next segments, designated sections A-5 and A-4, to Mega Bay 1. On the morning of December 4th, sections A6 and A4 were also positioned as planned. This second segment appears to consist of a liquid oxygen tank structure. With these parts completed, the booster only needed to complete the lower portion of the liquid oxygen tank, followed by the engine compartment and the forward section, completing both ends of the vehicle. Before beginning final assembly, SpaceX brought the fuel transfer tube to Mega Bay 1 on the 6th. This tube marked a major redesign of the V3 booster. Compared to previous models, the new transfer tube was significantly larger, comparable in size to the tubes used on the Falcon 9, and its dimensions required SpaceX to install it earlier in the assembly sequence, before the booster was fully assembled. This change was not just a structural change, it also represented a performance improvement. The larger tube was expected to accommodate the higher power and efficiency of the Raptor 3 engines planned for Starship V3. Furthermore, the tube would facilitate faster and more reliable U-turn maneuvers and the potential for simultaneous engine ignition during crucial flight phases. Even without established flight validation, the tube had already demonstrated its durability. During the B-18 incident, the tube sustained minimal damage. This performance bolstered SpaceX's confidence in the design and highlighted areas for refinement as the company prepared to meet higher performance demands. With the fuel transfer tube complete, the focus shifted to the liquid oxygen storage tank. This section will connect to the lower end of the transfer tube. This section was first seen through the narrow window of the Star Factory on the evening of December 9th. On the morning of the 10th, the transition to Mega Bay 1 was also completed. The tank assembly process will begin soon. After this phase, SpaceX only needs to move a few additional structural components. The final two terminal sections will be shipped and assembled completing the B-19 production process. If this momentum continues, the entire B-19 assembly could be completed in one to two weeks. This pace of progress is much faster than many observers had anticipated. After the B-18 incident, there was widespread belief that the booster schedule would be significantly delayed. Even when SpaceX announced its B-19 assembly plans in December, many forecasts still predicted production would continue until January of the following year. However, starting in late November, SpaceX ramped up its activity level and has maintained this impressive pace to date. If production is completed in the next two weeks, the company will likely end the year with a cryogenic test. This schedule allows the first half of January 2026 to focus on engine preparation and static burn tests, creating a feasible time frame for a possible 12th flight in late January. To ensure the 12th flight can proceed quickly, Rapid progress on B-19 is just one element of a broader initiative. Every system involved in a launch operation must operate simultaneously, and significant progress is currently underway at Starbase Pad 2. This new launch platform will serve as the next-generation setup intended to accommodate Starship V3, and its installation is currently underway with noticeable progress. One of the most significant improvements is the SQD system, which was recently installed as part of a broader integration effort. While other smaller elements are being prepared for installation, SpaceX has been conducting ongoing testing on the launch pad. The most significant evaluation is the fire trench spraying system, designed to protect the pad and vehicle by deploying large amounts of water to reduce heat and pressure during significant testing or launches. The most recent water spraying test took place on the afternoon of the 10th, and this is not an isolated incident. SpaceX conducted an additional test on the 9th and another earlier on the 5th, resulting in three complete water spray activations in just one week. 
while most of these test views were taken from a considerable distance, making it more difficult to appreciate the system's power. Alternative footage captured from a closer location provides a clearer insight into its power. In a recent photo taken from a vantage point facing one end of the fire trench, the intensity of the water is clearly visible. The spray reaches impressive heights, and the volume released from the nozzles demonstrates the system's ability to support much more powerful vehicles in the future. The first operational customer is the B-19, a prototype currently undergoing production at a remarkable pace. Just as important as the Flight 12 schedule is the progress of S-39. Recent observations at Mega Bay 2 indicate that its assembly phase is nearly complete and its heat shield system demonstrates SpaceX's ambitious aspirations for the V3 series. With this high level of completion, it's reasonable to anticipate that S-39 could be transported to the Massey test site as early as next week for cryogenic evaluation. The SQSD system has been on the test stand for a long time and appears fully prepared to assist with this procedure. If the cryogenic evaluation is successful during the third week of this month, S-39 could begin static firing test assessments in early January. This sequence is expected to proceed smoothly with the B-19 schedule as the booster and spacecraft conducted their static firing tests at separate facilities. Overall, S-39's continued progress and rapid development at Launchpad 2 reinforced confidence that Flight 12 can launch in January. The upcoming series of tests will highlight how the Starship system is beginning to demonstrate its increasingly advanced capabilities. Attention will be focused on how these crucial stages progress. That's it for today's episode, and we'll see you next time.